Hello and welcome back to AJM Learn. In this video, I'm going to show you all about the design tab. Um, lots of cool stuff in Squarespace. At the end of this post, I've I've linked my 30 minute or Squarespace in 30 minutes video. Um, I've linked to some other posts where I dive deeper into like how to choose fonts. But this one's surface level, just going to show you the basics. So the design tab is where you're setting all of your site styles. So your font styles, your buttons, your colors, all of that, it's all just preset there. So it does take some time to set up, but once it's done, it makes design much easier. Um, this site is already, you know, pretty set up, but I will kind of show you how it works. In the design tab also, side note, here's where your custom CSS can go. Um, on my other site, ajmexperience.com, um, I do tons of custom CSS posts. So if you're interested in customizing your site further, check that out. Or there's lots of good plugin websites if you just need something a little extra on your site. Um, but for the purposes of this, we'll go into site styles. Um, and let's start with fonts. So again, I have a much longer uh, post and video talking about all the ways you could choose fonts. Um, but the, the basic first way is to choose one of Squarespace's preset font packs. Um, it'll, whatever by whatever template you've chosen or if you've purchased one, um, it'll have something preset. You could go to switch. And then this is where all of Squarespace's preset font packs are. There's serif, sans serif, or sorry, sans serif, serif, and mixed. Um, some are more usable than others, but there are some good ones in there if you just want to choose something preset. Maybe your brand doesn't already have fonts set. So that's an option. Um, next, you're going to really get more specific. So here under headings, if you didn't want to choose one of the font packs, you go to family, go to browse all fonts, and then here's where you would go in and choose your heading font. So your heading font will be the same throughout the whole website. You'll set different like colors or sizes based on which heading, heading one, two, three, or four, but this is where you're choosing the actual font. Um, you can search fonts here if you already know what font you're looking for. Um, back here on the font uh, tab, so here for headings, you'll choose the weight. So like how bold is your font? Style, normal or italic. I haven't found a lot of use for always needing an italic heading, but sometimes maybe. Um, line height, you know, it's that height between your um, lines of text, letter spacing, lines between, or sorry, space between letters. Um, text transforms, so you could automatically make all your headings uppercase, lowercase, or capitalized. And then here's where you're setting all of your heading sizes. Um, before getting to this, I always suggest just creating kind of a dummy page and like putting a heading one, heading two, heading three, heading four right there on the page. So as you're playing around here, you can actually like see them changing and make sure they look good. So once you set your heading sizes, you can go back and you do the same with your paragraphs. That's like your body copy. So this stuff, um, you can do the same. You can either stick with the font that was, uh, let me get rid of my double face here, <laughs> stick with the font that was already pre-chosen, or you can browse all fonts, choose one for yourself, pick all the other stuff again, weight, line height, all of that. And then for paragraphs, you have three paragraph sizes. Um, your normal go-to paragraph size when you like are putting regular body copy on this on the site is typically paragraph two. So that's the one I kind of focus on the most. Like what do I want all my body copy size to be? And then paragraph three would be a tiny bit smaller. Paragraph one would be a little bit larger and you use those as needed. So those are your fonts. Um, I'm going to skip around a little because colors gets a little bit complex. Um, I'm going to jump really quickly to buttons. Um, all your button si uh, styles on the site. I do have some CSS on this site. So like this hover effect is done with CSS. Um, but your basic button styles are here. This is, or sorry, your button text styles. Sorry, your button styles. Um, sorry, let me go back to fonts. I keep jumping around. Sorry. Okay, so this is what gets confusing is... Under fonts, you do set your button fonts here. You have a primary, secondary, and tertiary button font or button option. So when you're dropping a button on your page, you can choose between those three styles. You can set different text styles for those here. Um, I've personally not found a lot of use case for having different text styles on a button. That seems sometimes messy, but you may find the right setting for that. Um, sorry, so jumping back. 
to site styles, buttons. Um, you're also kind of editing your button fonts here. So I've not really ever understood. I think the two speak to each other. So if you edit it one place, you don't have to edit it in the other, but I don't know why your button text styles are in two places, but it is here as well. But this is also where you set the shape. Are they rounded? Are they pill shaped? Are they square? Um, also, are they outlined or are they filled? How thick is your outline? And then like the padding of your button. And again, you set those for each button style. So primary, secondary, tertiary, use those how you see fit. Um, if you, if that's overwhelming, you can just apply, you can make all your settings and then click apply to all button types. I do that a lot because, you know, there's not always a use case for different types of buttons. The one time I use that a lot is maybe your biggest, like most important call to action on your, on your page. That one maybe, maybe is styled a little differently or a different color. Um, so that's your button tab. Again, sorry for the jumping around. It's just trying to make things go in like an order that kind of makes sense. Um, cause buttons is in two places, but jumping back into fonts, I'm going to be jumping around a little less now back into the fonts tab. Um, there are a lot of like miscellaneous things floating around on the website. So under assign styles is where you get that more miscellaneous stuff. Now you can, by the way, click on anything on your page and it'll take you there. So I'm going to click on this newsletter block and it will bring up the newsletter block and I can style all of that. Um, certain things are re really strange in Squarespace, like this button in the newsletter block for whatever reason, or the fonts in here, like sometimes they just don't take what you've set as your font styles. So you do have to come in and like manually set some of these like more specific, um, more specific blocks, but you can again, click on anything and it'll bring that up. So headings, paragraphs. So that's really helpful. You're not just searching buttons. You can click and it'll bring it up. Okay. Back to site styles. Um, I'm going to go do colors last cause it's, uh, very confusing. Um, uh, I'll try my best to explain it. It took, it's a, it's a learning curve there. Um, image blocks is something I do not use at all. And I'm, to be honest, going to completely skip over. Um, there are certain types of image blocks where you kind of have an image with, and the, and the caption is connected in some way. Now with all of the new Squarespace updates, I find this completely unnecessary and I'm just not even going to show you. Um, there's much easier and like better ways to do anything that would be involved in that. Okay. So back up here, I'll go real quick to spacing. This is your site margins. So if you wanted more spacing between the edge of your site and where the content starts, um, you know, your max page width, that's all here. Animation. So you can set a site wide animation. So if it were fade, like everything fades in as you scroll, if it's slide, everything slides up as you scroll, you can set the speed as well. And then lastly, time to dive into colors. So tried to figure out the best way to describe this. Um, let's start with the palette. So color palette is pretty straightforward. If you click edit palette, you could choose one of Squarespace's pre-picked palettes. If you don't, if you have a brand that isn't quite set yet, if you don't already have brand colors, um, you can actually upload an image and it can pull the colors from that to create a palette or at least help start to create the palette. Um, I tend to always use custom palettes because I'm usually working with an established brand that already has colors. Um, how the palette works. So what you set here is going to immediately pre-populate here. And I'll show you what these themes are in just a minute. But the best way to set the palette up I've learned is from left to right, you're basically going kind of lightest to darkest with a little bit of change. So the far left is your brand white. So if you have a pure white, this should be your pure white. Or if you use like a little bit of an off white or cream, like this is your brand white. And on the far right is your brand black. So whether that's full black or a little bit off black, um, that would go here. And then as you work your way in, this is like kind of your second lightest color. So mine, a lot of times I tend to do a really, really light gray. Just think when you're alternating sections, like if this was white, Maybe I'd want this a really light gray so you can see like the change in the sections. Um, so think about using it as a background. So even if you have, let's say your brand color is like a dark green, um, you could do a really like faded tint of that here uh, and use that instead of like a gray. So whatever you think would work for your brand for like a background second light color. Um, working your way in a little more, this middle one, I always do 
the primary brand color here. So that one pop of color that you use the most in your brand would be this. And then this one here, the fourth one, uh, it goes back and forth for me. Sometimes I do a secondary color here. Um, sometimes I do like a dark gray. So like a, like this is my full black and this one's actually a little bit, um, not full black, like this difference here. Um, so either like another really dark color to use as a background or a secondary color, just depending on how you want your brand to look. So once you've set your palette and you go back here, oops, it's going to pre-populate your themes in kind of a, the smartest way it knows how, basically. So for your lightest colors, it's going to be like, hey, here are your two light background options. And we've set all the fonts on that to be black or whatever Squarespace thinks. But you do have to go in and customize. And I'll show you what all this means. So let me get into editing mode here. I was doing this a second ago and it was being really slow. So let's see if we can get back into editing mode. Um, so basically, as it's loading, you can see each section has a color or a theme, as Squarespace calls them. So if I were to go to edit section and colors, this is where these themes come in. So your sections kind of alternate colors based on, I mean, depends on your site. You might have like an all white background site. Those are really, really in style or an all black background site. You might not do this at all, but most of the time you're going to have different sections and you'll be able to basically have those presets. So when I add a new section, say I want to add a blank section, um, you can see like this light gray is a little different than this white. So you can kind of see the different sections or I could say, no, I want this one to be this. Um, so you're already presetting and then you're also already, it's already preset that all the text on this is going to be white because it wouldn't make sense for it to be turquoise or all the text on this is going to be black because it wouldn't make sense for it to be white because you wouldn't see anything. Um, so all of those styles are preset. So that's how it works. Each section, you just choose that color and the, and the colors within that background color are already set. I know this is confusing. I'm hoping this is making sense. So again, back under colors, under your themes, this is where you have a chance to preset all of that. So you have two options for like, let's say a white background, or if you didn't want this to be white, you can go in here and there's a lot of settings. I do not suggest at all going into all of these and presetting everything because you're not going to use all your background settings and you're not going to use everything within here. You're not going to have all of these elements on your website. So just set the ones you need. Again, you can click on, so I'm in lightest one. So let me go to lightest one. For, th for this one, it's showing you what color it is. And let's say I want to change the color of a heading two on lightest one. I can just click on it and it's going to bring up that large heading. Or I can click on this and it's going to bring up the small heading or my paragraph. Um, so you can click on things and make your life easier so you're not like searching through all of this. Um, but basically, you're going to set the colors for each background that you want to use. So, you know, on dark one, if I wanted the heading to be turquoise, now every time I choose that dark one theme, the heading, you know, this color or sorry, the size of heading would be turquoise. Again, take some time. Um, for me, setting these site styles, the actual colors these themes, it's a little bit of a back and forth while I'm designing um, because sometimes you don't know quite what you need. For example, like it was preset with this palette. So I had two of these bright turquoise backgrounds and I'm like, well, I don't need that. I had this other teal in my brand I would like to use. So I actually went into one of them and said, hey, no, I want this section background to be this color. So you can do that as well. You don't, you're not stuck with how this is set. If you have like a third or fourth brand color that you kind of want to use, you can totally set that. So like my dark two, I don't think I'm even using this. I could say, no, I don't want this to be this like really dark gray. I actually want this to be like this color, whatever. So you can set all of that. And then of course you'd reset the font so they actually made sense. Um, so this is where it gets the most complex. The Again, the colors tab for me, I'm going to discard those crazy changes. The colors tab for me is where you're really going to spend the most time. The rest is pretty straightforward. Um, but that's your design tab. That, that's your site styles. I know it's a lot. Um, but once you have that all set up, designing is so much easier. 
Um, hope you enjoy. Hope that was semi-clear and good luck. You got this. <laughs>